Good morning. We're going to work on how to make an iOS app today using Xcode and Swift. And we're going to learn how the process of how to do that. So we're going to go ahead and switch to Xcode so we can have that open. And we're going to make a brand new project. So I'm going to go Command Shift 1. <clears throat> I'm going to go over here to the Welcome to Xcode screen so we can see that right here. And just go up to create a new Xcode project. You can also, of course, go up here to the File and New and Project for that. We're going to go choose a single view app and next. We could choose any of these other ones, but we're not worried about that. For product name, we're going to call it Color Change App. Again, you want to you follow the standard naming convention where you give a single name for this with no spaces for the project for that. Your organization name and identifier doesn't really matter for simple projects, but when you're doing more advanced projects, you actually want to make sure that organization identifier is unique for you. As you can see right here in the identifier, this is going to follow the standard reverse URL notation for that. Of course, we want to choose Swift. And then for these basic projects, we never want to put checkboxes in any of these three things. As we go through more of our projects, we'll definitely be using the unit and UI tests. But for a basic project like this, no need to worry about that. We go ahead and click Next. We're going to save this inside a folder where I've made right here inside my Dockings folder. You see I have an afternoon Swift folder for that, so we can handle those. We're going to make it the uh, project save inside this. We don't need to worry about creating a Git repository. We'll be handing out through GitHub. And just go ahead and hit Create here as well. If we take a look at that inside Finder, as you can see, I now have a folder right here called Color Change App. Inside that folder, I have my folder for the project itself with all the files and stuff that go along with it. And we're going to be able to make some changes to this as well. But before we do so, we want to make sure we put this inside GitHub so we can have a recovery for this or an archive that we can use that as the needed. So we go ahead, Command N for New Repository. And we want to make sure that the name of this app matches the same name we have right here, so Color Change App. So we go up here, Color Change App. And for the local path, it's going to be the same path right here that we saved that folder to, in this case, the Afternoon Swift 2018. Notice that this does not include this right here. You can also, of course, choose it with the Choose button and specify it right there, and choose Create Repository. And we're going to undo that initial commit because we want to actually specify what's happening so we can see also what's going inside a repository. So choose Undo. And so here are the initial files of that. We have our get attributes and um, all this fun stuff right here that's going along with it. Most of the stuff we actually do want to keep. The only thing we don't need to keep track of is this .xc user state. This is pretty much unusable for us, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of this. To do so, we're going to go up here to Repository, go to Repo Settings, and go to Ignored Files, and asterisk.xc user state. Again, xc user state right here. Take it right there out of that. Hit Save. It's removed from this list right there. And Create a Project as a better name. So we gave a commit message that makes sense, in this case, create a project and add a get ignore. Much more useful than simply initial commit, because we've got that project ready to go, and hit commit to master. And again, it's going to be listed right here in our history. You can see that as we go through that later. When we're ready to, we can actually publish that as well. We're going to go ahead and go back to Xcode and take a look at this. And maximize the screen here. So now that we're inside our Xcode project, we're going to take a look at the actual structure for this. As you can see over here on the left-hand side of our navigator window, we have our project structure right here in the project navigator section. And we're going to do some arrangements so we can actually have a better designed project so we can have this so it within the model view controller structure we're using for class. So to do so, we're going to go ahead and we're going to choose three of these files immediately and put them into our resources folder so we don't have to worry about them. Because for special, um, for basic projects like this, they're totally um, not anything we have to worry about. We want to make sure we have them but just don't have to look at them. So we're going to take the app delegate.swift, hold the command key down, click on XC assets as well as info.plist, right click on that and choose new group from selection. I'm going to name this resources, because these are files we actually do need and we might have to make changes to as we work at that, but they don't need to have it in the, um, available for everything on there. And so again, inside that, it's just the three files, app delegate, assets.xe assets, and info.plist. And so that's no big deal. Now if I go ahead and command B to build my project right now, it's going to give me a lovely error, because my build felt it doesn't know where my info.plist file is. Oh, I can't find that file. Now Xcode's a great tool, but it doesn't know that we moved that, so we have to actually tell Xcode we moved it. So we're going to go back to our project navigator, choose the project properties section. Oh, look, input.plist file. Tells us to pick that. And here it is right here for us, already specified in that resources folder we just made. And hit choose. Now if I do command B to build. Successful build. Amazing. Let's go ahead and do run as well so we can see what our app looks like. Now we've just, we've all we've done is just made the app. Nothing's happening. So launching the color change app right here on the iPhone XR environment. It's going to give it a couple seconds here. And boom, we go over to our simulator. And here's our amazing app of blank. 
That's great. Go ahead and move back to our code. So we've got our app running. It does really nothing right now. We have our resources folder and we're done with this. Again, taking a look at this, the app delicate.swift, this is basically the main for the app. We don't have to worry about this at all right now, so we'll just leave it alone. Assets.xc assets. Again, this is where we put our app icon. Any of our uh, visual tools we'll be using inside the app as well as possibly um, any of our video or sound files we're working with. And input.plist is actually the properties file that we have for this. So we actually see all the information stored right here inside this. So we'll go ahead and collapse that out because we don't have to see it again. We then have our view controller.swift, our main storyboard. So we're going to make this so it will happen with us. And we're going to again practice with a couple things here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the color change app and I'm going to make a new folder. And right click and new group. And this is going to be the model. And we're going to make a really simple model for this. I'm going to go in here and make a color tool class. So right click on this and make a new file. And it's going to choose a Swift file and next. And it's in the model group right here, as you can see. I'm going to call this color tool. So we can practice using some color manipulation on this. Now, this isn't strictly a model for a really great project. For a quick little sample, though, it works wonders. So color tool Swift and hit create. And we have our amazing color tool Swift. Um, import foundation, we don't need that, but we'll just go ahead and take this out right here and change our GUI kit because we're going to need the information for the color for this. And I don't need to really see this screen right here, so get that out of the way. And we'll make a public class color tool and some squigs. And so this is what we can have access to that. We're going to make a quick little method in here called create random color. So a public func create random color. And it's going to return a UI color. And so we have right here our uh, header for the method. And we need to go ahead and give some values for this. We have to give a red, green, and blue value to make a UI color. So let's go ahead and use a let for that since they're single use variables. So we use the let for this. And so red percent, because Swift uses percentages to deal with its red, green, and blue values. And it's going to be a type CG float. And it's going to be assigned the value of CG float. So we have our let red percent because we use percentages to handle our colors in Swift, and it's going to be a type CG float. So this is the of type operator again, and then the type that we're using, and we're going to assign a value to it, a CG float of arc for random modulo 256. It gives us a number between 0 and 255, and divide that by 255 as well. So do the same thing for green and blue. So we've got that, so it's going to get a random number between 250, uh, 0 and 255 for the colors for red, green, and blue, so we can have that right there. And we're basically done with this. We'll go ahead and close out of there. And we have our model group taking care of our resources. We then have our view. This is the main and uh, launch storyboard, so we're going to put those together in the group as well so we can see how they're organized. So right-click on that, and we're going to go choose new group from selection, and again call that the view. And we'll go take a look at what that means to our GitHub since we made some changes here. So in our changes, we have our um, some changes to this. So it's like, okay, added folders for project and condition master and so we have our model or that and then these are our controllers for this one so we'll right click on this and new group from selection this will be the controller now we have our controller right here but it's class view controllers of type UI view controller but we're gonna make some changes to this so it makes our design actually match what we're using in class so first thing of course is we can take our squiggles vertically align them we're gonna explicitly define this as a public class which means we have to also at this point now we have to say that the view to load must also be explicitly defined as public because it has to be at least as uh, accessible as its enclosing type. So build that again, that view to load. We are also going to explicitly say this is returning a type void because even though it will compile without that, we want to give a good design for this. So we have our view controller as a type view value view controller. And I'm going to give this a better name. So I'm going to click over here. And Swift doesn't care about the match between these two files, but I like to match them as well. So to have this color change view controller and this will also be color change view controller so we have the same file name here of color change view controller on this that's a type UI view controller we added that right there so we have our basic structure right here we have the model view and controller folders that map hold our components together we updated this so it has a void type and explicitly defined them as public now we have to actually go and link the files together to do that we go into the view we're going to go down here to the main storyboard the main storyboard right here is where we actually see this. We can see that this arrow indicates where the starting point of the screen is. And we need to use the inspector window. So that's Alt Command Zero to have that open up. And what we need to do is we need to link this storyboard to the controller file right here. Now to do that, all we have to do is click on the storyboard controller right here. We use the view controller section either clicking out right here on this section or over here on the left in the outline. 
go to the identity inspector, which is the one that looks kind of like a driver's license up here in the corner. And instead of view controller, we're gonna backspace that out and we're gonna give it the name of the class we just made. So color change, oh look, it auto types it for us. Color change view controller. Go ahead and press enter and save. And now these are linked together. This is what's gonna allow us to use the assistant editor to do some really cool stuff. So now that I've got view linked, I'm gonna go ahead and close out this side window right here with command zero to get rid of the outline. I'm gonna open up the assistant editor with alt command zero, or alt command enter, excuse me, alt command enter to open the assistant editor. And we have right here my lovely structure for this. And we're going to close out that Alt Command Zero side window right here. So we've got this right here. We have them linked together. And so I'm going to go ahead and add some buttons to this. Now this is a version of Xcode. My um, object library is up here. If you have an older version of Xcode, your object library is down here in this bottom section of your utility pane. But object library, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab a button. And I'm going to drag it out. And I'm going to use the blue eye line to bring that out so it's right here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so it's a nice big button and put it back again in the middle, right there. And so I have my area for my button right here. And now I have this linked right here so that I have the automatic link between this. So this is linked because I did that lovely section right here on my utility inspector, identity inspector, excuse me, where I linked it right there. So I have my automatic link on this so it has it show up. Now what I need to do in order to make this link so I can actually control it, I have to do a link between this button itself and the code. To do so, I right click and drag or control click and drag. So I'm gonna right click right here on the button and drag over here up to my top of my class. And as you can see, I have this little insert outlet action or output collection. I'm gonna click and release. And I choose an outlet for the option and we'll call this be the color button. As you can see, obviously it's a type UI button. Storage type, definitely wanna leave that as weak and we choose connect. And it automatically drags out this line of code right here that says we have an IB outlet weak bar called color button, zip type UI button optional. Fantastic. So this gives me a reference to it so I can use it inside my code. I also have a well right here, so if I hover over that, as you can see, it also brings that lovely reference right here to the color button on the user interface. Great little save, it actually makes it collect. I can also do the same thing right here from this outline. I can control drag over here and drag out this way. I'm gonna use that to do this time to do the um, action for it. So right click and remove again. And this time it's gonna be an action. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this to be the color click as the name. And I never want to use the any. I want to actually specify this is for a button. And the standard approach for using a button is the touch up inside. So I choose that again for action, naming the th a method of this color click and Y button, touch up inside and choose connect. And again, I have this lovely little thing. It gives me a lovely method. Hover over that and the, as you can see on the well on line 22, it outlines that I'm talking to the button right there. So we're gonna go right here, press enter, so we have vertically aligned squiggles because I like it that way. And this at IB action is the keyword that identifies it as a GUI method. And it has a color click of sender type UI button. Now, because there's nothing specified right here, we know it's void, but again, I like to formally specify that it's the return type void. So I have that right there. So private lazy var my color tool, because since I'm in a view controller, I don't have access to an it easily. So it's gonna initialize it when it needs to, but using the default initializer right here that I specified. So the private lazy var my color tool is of type color tool and it initializes it with the initializer. So it gives me access to it. So when I need to, I have access to it. And I'm gonna tell it right here inside the method that when I click the button, I wanna use that color tool to change the background of my view. So to do so, I just use self dot and type in view. And that refers to this view right here. And as you can see right here, it has a capital V over the outline. That's the same thing we're looking at. Same thing with the color button right here, lowercase c color button, is this color button. Oh, nice little naming right there. And then dot background color equals my color tool dot create random color. So I have a color tool reference right here that I'm gonna assign the color tools value for this into the color to background color for that object. And I'm gonna do command B to build, making sure it builds properly. If it builds successful, we'll do run. I'm gonna stop the existing version of the nothing that we had. It's gonna attach to it and I click the button. Oh no, it's all black, what happened? Well, let's go take a look at this. So if I look at my color tool method, so command one to get back to the main screen, go to my model, look at my color tool, close my assistant editor. My values right here of CG float is arc Brennan modulo 256 divided by 255. These are all integer values. Oh no, if I divide by an integer, I'm automatically gonna get a zero. Ack. I have to make sure I specify this. We'll use the casting on this. 
So we'll make sure we actually make this happen as a double value. Cast that value right here as a double, making sure we get a full double division. I'm doing both sides of the, of the action right here. So this is a double turning that to a double, dividing by that. I could actually do the whole thing as it cast as a double because of the fact that we want to make sure we have a nice decimal value. I'm doing both sides on that to make sure it's, everything's perfectly happy. And go ahead and cache that value. Save. Rerun the app again. And now I have a random color changing app. So let's take a quick look again at what we did. Over here in the navigator window, we have the fact that we made our model, view, controller, and resources folders or groups inside Xcode. And we organized our code into those components. So the view has the storyboard files that we're using right now. We have our model that has our color tool class, where we right now all we have is the create random color method that returns a UI color that we properly now grab a random number between 0 and 255, divided by 255.0 to make sure we get a decimal value for our percentage. And then take those values, red percent, green percent, and blue percent, along with a, a, a CG float for a valve of 100. And we grab that right there. And in fact, we can even do this as 1.0. So we take that CG float of 1.0 because it's 100% inside our model. We then use our resources. We don't do anything with that, so we close those out of the way. And our controller class right here, we make a reference to the color tool object as a lazy var. We have our weak var. For a color button, there's a UI button optional, which we'll talk more about later. And then inside that, we have an ID action, which means it's a GUI method called color click, with zip type void, that when I click on this, I'm going to set myself.view.backgroundcolor color to my color.createRandomColor. So we can see that happening right there. Let's do another line right here, and we're going to add the button. And so we'll now assign it so that the color tool itself creates another color for the color button. And when I run it, every time I click the button, the button will change colors too. So now I have a color changing button and a color changing screen, the most amazing app we've ever made on the planet. And so you can clearly see, if I click anywhere in the button, that those values change every time, and it's a different value. It could theoretically be the same one, but since they're randomly generated, not very likely. Of course, we should make sure we commit to GitHub. We had change files right here. Of course, I can see the changes that were made, and added a color change faction. So we've got our button made. We have it right there. We've got that ready to go.